Hey there guys, how's it going? ZWO very kindly sent over a C-Star S50 Smart Telescope for review and evaluation purposes. I uh, just want to let you know straight away this isn't my unit. This eventually does have to go back, uh, which I'm probably going to be quite sad about after using it now because it seems like a great device and I think it's going to be extremely popular for all the right reasons, luckily. So uh, more on that. Anyway, I've just finished my first ever session with it about a half an hour ago. I've recorded a bunch of different thoughts about it from that first session, things that I think are worth mentioning. In a video of this nature to anybody who's perhaps got one on order or is you know a prospective buyer thinking about purchasing one of these and i've also taken the time to research up a couple of different facts too which you've maybe not heard about from anywhere else so uh, let's dive into it i hope you're gonna enjoy so straight away i'd like to talk about the unboxing experience and give props really to zwo on this one because the boxing of many telescopes these days is very misleading. There's pictures of, you know, NASA Hubble quality images on them and it's just not realistic. Uh, whereas ZWO have actually opted for a really nice understated box and it is refreshing. It's really good to see. Uh, inside that box is another kind of a hard case, extremely hard foam. I expected from looking at other people's videos that I wasn't going to be too impressed by that thing, but actually it took me a little bit by surprise. It seems to be a great little unit and I think it's going to last years and years to be honest without much issue I do plan on using it by the way because everything goes in there so neatly uh, it'd be criminal not so now the first thing you're greeted by once you open up the box is the tripod and the unit itself now the tripod is a aluminium and carbon fiber unit and it is very well built indeed immediately impressed me upon picking it up and just feeling how well fit everything was together uh, really impressive it goes from a range of nine inches tall at its shortest to 14 inches tall at its absolute tallest uh, and it uses a 3 8 inch tripod thread so a full size tripod thread if you have one lying around and you'd like to use a taller tripod it would indeed be possible for you to do that now inside the c star is an imx 462 sensor by sony this is used in some of zwo's own planetary style cameras and i think it's actually a really good fit for an optic of this focal length which is a triplet apochromatic triplet at 250 millimeters of focal length now it's a 50 millimeter objective making it roughly f5 focal ratio and the color correction luckily seems to be very good indeed uh, i was initially a little bit worried before i actually tested it out for myself given that they don't state exactly what type of glass is used in this thing so I expected the worst, but I needn't have because it's actually very well color corrected. Now, next up inside of this unit is actually a set of three different filters, two of which the user can select from within the app. And the third one is used automatically at the start of every single astronomical observing session. While it takes some darks so that it can calibrate itself as the IMX462 sensor as a very slightly changing fingerprint if you will each and every time it's powered on so they've gotten around that ever being a problem without needing to use a library of darks by simply having it take fresh darks every time which is a great solution it's actually the best solution so uh, top marks right there now the other two filters in this one is a standard uv ir cut filter which is obviously a very welcome addition um, and it's going to get used a ton i would imagine there's very many targets out there we're going to use that and the other one is actually, they call it a light pollution filter, but it's actually a dual narrowband filter. Uh, you wouldn't want to use it on broadband targets. It really strictly is meant for nebulae targets because it's simply a HA03 filter. It lets nothing else through. Uh, now the full width half max of those band passes, I actually found those out for you. It's 20 nanometers in HA and 30 nanometers in O3. So it's not very narrow but i think that's exactly what you want in a device like this where it's actually limited to taking 10 seconds long exposures if you're trying to use something like a three and a half nanometer ultra dual narrowband filter i really think you'd struggle with many targets that didn't have bright stars in the field of view it wouldn't be able to stack them up and do its job properly so i think it's a good choice by zwo to have included that type of filter in this thing now this device has an operation range which i think is worth mentioning in terms of temperature of minus 10 celsius to plus 40. now in most places on the planet it's probably not going to be too much of an issue uh, i can only ever see really the plus 40 one being an issue if you're doing a particularly long extended session of solar in the middle of the day as the unit could probably heat up quite fast given that it's a you know a nice dark black matte color um but luckily it does have a 
kind of a preservation power off uh, where if ever reaches 60 degrees or so at the battery temperature it will instead just shut itself break down rather than actually cause any damage so that's good to know now something that's quite interesting about this thing in terms of the optic as we talked about before it's a 250 mil triplet paired with that imx 462 but the field of view that that actually gives uh when compared to let's say a full frame camera with a prime lens actually matches up to being about 1750 to 1800 millimeters or so so you'd need a monstrously big prime lens or a slightly less monstrously big but still huge uh, lens on an APS-C to actually match the tightness of field of view that this thing offers. Now the next plus point on this is the Wi-Fi range. I had a little bit of a brief test just walking around my garden and seeing how strong the connection was, how smoothly it was refreshing frames on my device and it seems to be very strong really. I had no dropouts whatsoever, no issues. In fact I could leave this thing on and walk back in my observatory where I am right now and have it coming through walls, no problem whatsoever. You can also select yourself, should you wish, to use the 2.4 GHz band if you need more wall penetration. Uh, if you're putting this thing outside and then you want to get back on the couch and enjoy a cozy session of astronomy, uh, it's going to probably be completely suitable for that, I would say. Now, in terms of the device itself, once I'd finally got it outside and underneath some clear skies and able to test it properly, uh, as I mentioned, the color correction, one thing that worried me uh, initially, I really definitely needn't have worried about that. It's absolutely awesome. Um, but one thing that isn't so awesome is the auto-focusing routine's repeatability. Uh, I deliberately set out to test this in a few different portions of the sky, each time trying to select either, you know, very dim stars or very bright stars, or sometimes a selection of both. I went all in on testing autofocus actually, um, to the point where to verify the autofocus routines were actually going off successfully. I designed and 3D printed myself a Batinov mask for the Sea Star specifically. Probably going to make these available at some point, by the way, just by the by for anybody interested. The issue I was noticing was sometimes, probably about 50% of the time, it would nail focus completely crisp. You know, it did a great job as verified by the mask. Um, the other 50% of the time, it was close but not completely perfect. Uh, it was visible upon inspection. So, uh, Probably something that's going to get fixed with, you know, updates to the auto-focusing routine, the algorithm that they use, all that in upcoming firmware, that kind of thing I would imagine. But for just for now, you know, it's a problem I discovered. So, you know, I wanted to mention it to you guys so you know about that. Uh, one of a good point, by the way, of having a Batinov mask on hand was I was able to, again, further test that color correction of the device and tell you that there is no focus shift um, between uv ir cut being used or when you switch with the internal filter wheel to that dual narrowband filter the focus doesn't need redoing so you could focus in either or and get a perfect crisp focus so that's good to know and again it's a testament to the uh, color correction of this particular little telescope now in terms of actually using this thing under the stars and stacking up on targets um i noticed that there is quite a lot of lost time uh so what i mean by that is after your initial darks is taken which doesn't take long at all probably about a minute or so and you start stacking up time uh on a target 10 of those 10 second exposures that it takes i reckon out of watching this thing outside sat near the scope definitely not knocking it or anything like that um out of about a 10 minute observation session allowing it to do some live stacking i probably ended up with about seven minutes actually stacked the rest was just lost time unfortunately now i don't know if there was stacking errors going on or tracking errors and things like that causing it to lose that time i couldn't tell you what was going on behind the hood but all i can tell you there was no you know no clouds um no possible chance that it got knocked or anything like that so it was all something going on internally that means it adds up to some lost time Again, it's probably something that's going to get fixed uh, eventually with, you know, firmware updates and optimizations on that side of things. But all the same, I do think it's worth mentioning to you guys uh, so you know about it. Uh, another thing I noted when trying it out on a few different targets was that the stacking algorithm can be a little bit hit or miss or in its own right. So what I mean by that is they were taking some shots of the Pleiades. It was going off really well and then seemingly out of nowhere, uh, it just stacked up a you know a really badly trailed frame which ruined the rest of the stack kind of sucks uh but you know it is what it is it's, again it's a good device in its infancy so i'm not willing to be too harsh on it uh, at least until it's had a chance to mature 
and we'll see exactly where it goes because no doubt again this is something that can be fixed with uh, firmware updates and changes to its stacking parameters now in terms of the results that i got from tonight's little session here um i tried my best to actually take these frames when it was really good tonight uh, but it is probably very much far out of 10 nights so i am going to try it again on a better session and see what we can pull out from the sky but so far each one of these is about seven or eight minutes or so probably took about 10 to 12 minutes in reality for each one of these uh we got ngc 7000 that kind of region shot with the dual narrowband filter that stacked up really well nice high resolution image i've done no processing to this whatsoever this is left completely alone and just given an unlinked stf screen stretch just for you know demonstration sake in pixel insight the same is true for all of these um here is the pleiades cluster so you can see the merope nebula just around about there and unfortunately you can see that stacking uh, issue that i talked about where it's clearly stacked a very trailed frame uh no idea what the heck went on there guys but all the same <laughs> you know it ruined an otherwise perfectly good stack interesting to see though that so much of the nebulosity of the pleiades was popping up in such a little amount of integration time now this one struggled a little bit more with the bubble nebula um i had a bit of trouble getting this thing focused at this point but once i did i set it off stacking and as you can see a lot of resolution actually present in there you can see the main formation the the brightest part of the bubble nebula right there right next to this central star popping up really clean actually it's normally a feature you wouldn't see in such a small setup i would say so you know top marks in terms of resolution for this thing once it's all nailed on focus now the last shot that i got of the night was of m33 this was a brief live stack and as you can see it did stack a couple of slightly trailed frames unfortunately owing to that kind of egg-shaped nature the elongation of those stars which should be on a better stack pinpoint like this so it's not infallible but still all the same it would be nice to see the option to keep all your individual uh, tiffs or fits or whatever it wants to save them as and then you could not have this issue weed them out yourself and do your own stacks afterwards for people who are interested in that kind of thing you will note potentially uh the difference in field rotation present at different pointing angles in the sky so ngc 7000 had very little these are all completely uncropped of course uh compared to let's say the bubble nebula region very similar amount of time lots more field ro uh, rotation has been present on that one so if you left this for perhaps an hour you might have to make quite a severe crop to get rid of all that kind of field rotation stacking noise in the corners same thing's true for m45 here very very little field rotation present just a little bit over the course of that shot whereas m33 considerably more is visible well then guys that really is about it from me for uh, this particular video there's going to be plenty more to come of course as i think we're having a ton of fun using this thing and i imagine when it comes to time for it to go back i'm going to be sad to see it go so i may end up actually purchasing one for myself aside from this we'll have to see how i feel by the end of the review period and what changes in that time too but yeah it's a great device so far and i think it's absolutely worth the price tag i just want to put that out there even with the slight imperfections we're visiting uh, right now in this review um i am kind of nitpicky as people go you know what i mean so <laughs> i just want to put it all out there and let you guys know everything i thought about it but overwhelmingly i think it's a great device and i think it's going to do very very well indeed um i do have affiliate links for this thing active and i hope that my honest opinions on it has been helpful to some of you guys out there watching i just want to say now as always thank you very much indeed for your time for your support uh you guys mean the world to me and i couldn't do it without you truly i couldn't so uh, so honestly thank you that's about it. Anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. So until then, if you have suggestions, by the way, let me know and I'll try my absolute best to address anything you have about this device. Look after yourselves and clear skies.